choir, please come forward. Choir, please come forward. Let's all please stand as I read one verse out of John chapter 4, John chapter 4, John chapter 4 reads like this, but the hour cometh and is now when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Let's all join together and sing, great are you Lord, words are on the screen.
up Sunday school at 10, worship service at 11, live on Facebook at 11 each Sunday. And we missed last Sunday because of technical difficulties, but a lot of work went in this week to get that put back, and we want to thank everybody for everything they've done. So those of you at home that's able to watch with us this morning, there's been countless hours put in to uh, get this service to you today, so we hope you get a blessing from it. Um, Wednesday night, 530 is dinner. 6 o'clock is Bible study. Um, the re- rumor is that the Bible studies have been really, really great. Uh, David, Josh, do y'all want to say anything on that right quick? It wouldn't cut me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very good. Yeah. So in some of but the, there's enough room for others to come. Yeah, they've got some of the largest numbers they've had, but are willing for more to come in and, and wanting more to come in. So if you can make time Wednesday night for Bible study, that'd be great. Uh, choir practice starts at 7, working on the Easter Cantata, so please come and be here with that for choir practice. Um, offering box is in the foyer. You're still not passing the plates because of COVID. If you want to give it to one of the deacons, you can, or you can go to hpcdawson.com and donate there. So uh, <clears throat> we have a few things that's been brought up and, and been in the works, and we just want to give you updates on them. Uh, the Sunday we were gone, you talked about the doors. The doors have been measured by two different companies, and we're awaiting final price on the front doors to get those fixed. Also, the fire sprinkler uh, system in the gym is uh, set up for the 17th of February to be inspected. We called um, both the companies that were talked about to call. Lanier has since quit doing it, and um, Peach State Fire does not do it. So we had to reach out to Gainesville Fire. They're the only ones in our area that does that. And so it's scheduled for uh, February the 17th to do that. And then also we have nursery available after the choir today for children five and under. We've been kind of lenient on that uh, with the children, but let's try to be a little better if we can to be five and under the age that goes back to nursery. After five, six years old, they're able to come in and sit in the sanctuary and we want them to start hearing the word and start eating on the meat a little bit. So but let's try to be a little more strict on that. Uh, School needs uh, that's been met this month so far. Uh, Lisa has took up five bottles of detergent, five rolls of towels, five baby wipes, five boxes of Kleenex, and uh, five blankets. Also, she still has about $50 left and still taking up donations for that. They're still in need of household (coughs) items at the school. We're giving those to Nikki McCall and she's giving them out as she sees fit. Uh, Prayer requests this week, we have uh, Janine Scover, Steve Gruber, Bud Stevens family, Pink and Virginia Towns, folk from Pink Pink uh, yesterday. They're doing real well, but they're getting kind of cabin fever, being closed in and not being able to go anywhere. So if you get a chance, and, and trust me, I know it'll be a long conversation, but call Pink and speak with them. Call Pink and Virginia and just talk with them on the phone. Just let them hear your voice. Uh, it, it's, it's good for them, so let them hear from you. Um, then also we have Gene Addison's sister-in-law, Renee Kane's dad passed away this week. We want to keep remembering Tony Wiley uh, as he has complications from surgery and still getting better. Justin Thomas was sent out this week uh, and Dorothy Martin. And uh, last week we had an urgent prayer request from Marsh Sweatman. Sherry, you want to give us an update? Yes. Got to spend some time Friday with uh, Sammy Horner. Him and Ann came to clean the church. And Sammy came in and he's got his walker with him as well. It's, I was on the phone with Kip and it, it's got brakes and all kind of stuff on it. It's pretty cool looking. But uh, Sammy sat in there for about an hour with me, got to talk with him. He's doing great, getting better each day. Uh, he said he's about doctored to death and ready to come back to church. So uh, prayers are working with Sammy and Ann. And they're doing great. Uh, any other Prayer request. Any, anybody else we need to remember? Brother Tony, just keep my money in prayers up, please. And I want to thank the church and everybody at the church for the prayers that you've given us and the flowers and the cards. What's up, Lisa? Thank you so much. And Mama sent that too. Thank y'all. Anybody else? Any other prayer requests? So let's 
first member of Winford Reeves. I had Winford on here. I typed his name to cut it off for some reason. First member of Winford Reeves. Also, next Saturday, is coming up Saturday, is Meals by Grace at 1 o'clock. If you want to sign up for that, see Sean. Uh, Brian, she'll get you signed up, or you can go to Meals by Grace website and sign up yourself. Anybody else? Any other announcements? All right. If you'll stand on your feet, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for your attendance. I know it's been questionable about the weather and those things, but what a beautiful snow it was last night. And God's got it out of the way in order for us to meet here today. But we just thank you for being here. Mike Henson, will you lead us in the word of prayer? Let's pray. Most glorious and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, this is a day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Lord, we just ask that you be in this service, Lord, as, as Brother Tony stands and brings the bread, the bread of life, Lord. Be with the song service. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for salvation. Where would we be without that assurance, Lord, that when this life is over, when we've drawn that last breath, Lord, we'll be in the presence of the Lord. Lord, we just ask that if there be anyone here today that's lost, that don't know you in a free part of sin, what a great day it would be to hear someone say, I've been saved. Lord, just take this service, Lord, and use it for your will. These things I ask in the most precious name I know, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 204, great gospel song to him, 204. <laughs>
than it is that way. Thanks, Tina. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, we can. <laughs> it's okay, I'm just aggravating you. <clears throat> I hope that it's not worse that way than it is this way. We, we want you to get what we've got out of today. Got your Bibles and want to follow along with us. Second Kings, fourth chapter. 
<clears throat> we'll be referring to the book of Romans, the first chapter for one verse. If you want to go ahead and mark that. We uh, have preached the scripture several times. Uh, one of the probably most fun times we've ever had was with this scripture was when the Lord used it way back in 2005 down at Brandywine Church. Um, God spoke to us through this scripture and showed us that we would be pastoring there and uh, made it surreal to the point that we had to stop preaching and just sit down. And uh, things happened just like God showed us they would. But what we want to talk about today is the, the ministry of Elijah and the number of truths that it teaches us. It teaches us a lot of truths if we go through, and I thought it was something how they sung that song, Double Portion, this morning. Elijah truly had a double portion from Elijah. He was truly blessed by God. He got to see many things, but through those things, it's great to go back and learn them in the Old Testament, what he taught us. Um, a lot of his ministry shows us um, the loving and uh, provincial care of God and how God takes care of us all, young, old, rich, poor, the broken, the healed. He takes care of all of us. God's always there. And, and some of the best places you can find that is there, uh, just backing up before the scripture we're going to read today, you'll find where the widow uh, was there. and She was had nothing but a little pot of oil and some meal. And he told her to go out and take the vessels and fill them up. And told her to borrow the vessels and not borrow a few, but to borrow them all. And, uh, you, you may have listened to that and had it preached to you different ways, but she borrowed the small vessels, the big vessels, the broken vessels. She borrowed them all, and Elijah was able to fill every one of them with what she had in her little vessel. And she took that oil, and she sold it, and she paid the debtors, and she was able to uh, pay off the things there that uh, she owed and, and able to live without trouble and without any more despair. And so then, then you find other, other cases to where, uh, like on Mount Carmel, where Elijah goes and witnesses and things we've preached about over the last few weeks, but there's always a care of God in Elijah's messages. He shows us God's involvement in the lives of, of, of all of us throughout the walks of life, wherever we may be. I, I can remember some of the things that happened in my life before I accepted Christ, before I accepted Him as my Savior, and it's ever evident now that God was there. That God was there and He was keeping me to that point to where I could give myself to Him. So throughout all our lives, but the, the main time that we realize God's there is when we expect His loving grace. Or when we accept His loving grace. And uh, Elijah's uh, teachings also demonstrates the necessity of faith for everyone. There's a necessity today that we have faith in good times, in bad times, and in those times on the mountain, we, we still have to keep our faith. And I'm going to uh, try to express that a little bit today in the message, but God's uh, uh, always with us and He de demonstrates the necessity of our faith regardless of social or financial status. You know, sometimes we have a lot of faith when everything is going just right and we're in the right group and everybody's doing well and everybody's uh, clicking together and we're all you know in the amen corner and we're all on the same page but sometimes our faith will begin to waver when we get a little bit out on our own we get a little bit out uh, you know in in the lifeboat we've got away from the ship or uh, maybe we've got completely out of the water and we've got up on the bank and we've got into the woods and we've started hiding and we, we've got into a little cave and we've got back or we, we've got in all the way into our tent or, or maybe we've left the uh, general area completely and our faith begins to waver. But Elijah's teachings teaches us there's a necessity, no matter when, that we should always have faith. We should always have faith and have a strong faith. And it also shows us uh, this, and this is the last one, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And, and that'll also be in today's passage just a little bit because this humanite woman, she heard uh, the word of God spoke and she heard 
what the uh, man of God said, and she instilled that into her heart. And so that, that, that's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So I want you to mark that down. But this is what I want to get to you today. And, I, and I've preached this message, like I said, several times. I, I'd be afraid to count how many times I've preached this message. And sometimes we, we go back and we look at dates and we recall in our mind of, of what we preached and how we preached and, and those things. And I want you to know today I'm my biggest critic today. I am my biggest critic, and I, I leave here on Sundays, and, and some of you may not, and, and some of you may not care, but you say, why does he have notes? Well, I, I want you to know why I have notes. I have notes today because God has charged us to get you a message. God has charged us uh, to lead you and to lead your path, and I don't want to miss anything today. I don't want to go astray and get to rambling. Uh, I'll tell you in just a minute, if me and you sit and talk, we can run circles around each other talking about different things, but when I get behind this sacred desk today, I want to give you nothing more than what God has laid on our heart, and, and that is it, but I don't want to uh, leave out any of it as well. And so today I want you to pay close attention and maybe take some notes yourself. But this Shemite woman that I'm going to talk to you about today, she was a, a, that of a wife. She was that of a, a, a real prominent woman, I believe. The Bible uh, talks about her in a way since she was a good woman. I believe she had a standard there in the community in which she lived. I believe uh, she was an up, uh, hell-holding citizen. She was uh, that that would do what she said. But I also believe that she was a godly woman. I believe she was a woman that was feared, uh, uh, feared the Lord and feared what he might do with her life if she didn't follow him. And why do I believe that? Well, I'm going to show that to you today, but this is what I believe as well as Elijah had a ministry and he taught us through that ministry. This Shumanite woman had a ministry. She had a ministry there and it started when she told her husband, in the ninth verse, I believe it is, say she said, I perceive. She said, I perceive. In other words, God had showed her something. But I'm going to try to read to you here in the eighth verse. And we're going to read through that of the uh, 17th verse and stop for a moment. But the eighth verse reads like this in the fourth chapter, 2 Kings 8th verse. And it fell on the day that Elijah passed to Shuman, where I was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. So Elijah had a drawing to this woman. He had a, a, a little bit of maybe compassion on her. And, and you see, you say, well, why, why was that? Why did Elijah uh, have a drawing to her? She supplied him that of bread. She supplied him that of a place, that of a lodging place. And so he would draw in continually and and, and uh, maybe abide with her for a little while and get a little strength for the journey. And she said unto her husband, she spoke to her husband, and now I want you to know something that in this time, and we, we can go on about this in a whole another message, but in this time when it came to the Word of God, when it came to that of the understanding of God's working, the women uh, uh, were told to remain silent. The women were told really not to speak, but... She spoke to her husband and she told her husband, she said this, she said, uh, uh, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God which passeth by us continually. I want you to know something today. If God speaks to you, please do not refrain from speaking. If this woman would have listened to the masses, uh, if this woman would have uh, uh, done as many will tell you today, uh, uh, and I believe it's misinterpreted, but they say the wives should be subject to the husband uh, and the wives should remain silent. Well, I, I want you to know today that's a uh, misinformed uh, uh, gospel if you'll have it today. I believe with all that's in me that is my Bible uh, uh, teaches me that God's no respecter person, uh, uh, that we all have the ability Ability, uh, uh, to go to the throne we all have the ability to interpret what God speaks to us and we all have the ability to stand up uh, and speak that of what God is giving us that's what I believe this morning uh, and I hope you believe as well but uh, she went to her husband and she perceived uh, that this was a holy man of God that passeth by uh, continually and she uh, 
uh, talk to her husband. Now this is a man who no doubt had crops and this is a man who no doubt had a schedule himself and he had fields to plow and he had things uh, uh, to take care of and barters to make and uh, uh, animals to kill and put food on the table. But she said, look, uh, I need you to slow down for a minute uh, for the sake of the gospel. And I'm going to add a few words here and I want you to know these are my thoughts and what God's given me. Uh, but she says, I need you to slow down uh, from the things of this world. It's just me and you here, it's just us. Uh, we need to slow down because this man of God is passing by uh, and it's pricked my heart. Uh, husband, I ask you, uh, can we prepare him a chamber? Can we make him a place uh, uh, that he can come in and he can lay down uh, and he can study the Word of God? She said, this is what God's told me. She said, let us... Uh, Make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. Uh, and let us set for him there a bed and a table uh, and a stool and a candlestick. Uh, and it shall be when he cometh to us uh, that he shall turn uh, he shall turn in thither. Uh, in other words, she said, uh, there may be somebody down the street uh, that can bake a loaf of bread better than I can. Uh, there may be somebody down the street uh, that's got pretty uh, raiment hanging up uh, in their windows. Uh, there may, may be somebody down the street uh, that's put out a little welcome mat uh, but I want to do all I can uh, to make sure uh, when the man of God passes by here uh, he knows he's accepted uh, he knows we're expecting him uh, he knows that there's a place uh, uh, here in our home uh, that he can come and study he can read uh, and he can rest uh, uh, in the word of God and in comfort and in safety Husband, I beg you, let's make him a place. And this husband, he listened to his wife and he made a place there. Now you take that as far as you want today and uh, some of you are going to get in the car on the way home and uh, you're going to be over there putting lotion on your hands uh, and you're going to say, now husband, did you hear what the preacher said? Uh, you need to listen to me. Uh, uh, God, I perceive. Uh, uh, don't misuse it, women. Uh, uh, but husbands, I want to tell you something today. Uh, uh, and We may get done with this message today and we may not. Uh, I want to tell you something today. Uh, uh, just because she's a woman, uh, don't think she's beneath you. Uh, uh, just because the Bible uh, uh, uses it in one place, uh, uh, that they should be subject. I want you to uh, let you know what it also means. Uh, uh, if a woman's supposed to be subject uh, uh, to her husband and supposed to be loyal, I want to tell you something today, men. Uh, uh, you should give her the same respect. Uh, uh, you should listen uh, uh, to what God speaks through to her. Uh, and you should listen to her. Uh, um, as much as she listens to you uh, and you should be subject to her uh, uh, because I want to tell you something uh, I'm as stubborn and as bullheaded as they come uh, and sometimes uh, it takes God speaking to me uh, uh, through my companion uh, uh, for me to hear what he says uh, and you say well preacher I've been praying for a sign I've been praying for somebody to show me listen because God's going to send it close to home Listen today to what he's using your companion for. Uh, uh, but it goes on there as they made the chamber uh, and they began to uh, make a place. Uh, her ministry uh, uh, started out with hospitality and faith. Uh, she had hospitality for the man of God. Uh, uh, but she also had a faith for the gospel. Uh, uh, you say, well, she hadn't seen anything yet. Uh, uh, she hadn't seen no miracles. Uh, she hadn't seen uh, the, that of the whirlwind. She hadn't seen that of the chariot. Uh, she hadn't seen any of that stuff. She didn't see the waters divide there at Jordan uh, when he took the mantle and he smote the water. Uh, uh, but yet she still, uh, she had a hospitality. Uh, I want you to know something today. If I could preach a message to you, that you got a hold of. I'd tell you to have a hospitality for the gospel today. Uh, what does that mean? I'd tell you to be like this Shumanite woman. Uh, welcome the gospel in your home. Uh, uh, welcome the gospel in your life uh, and apply it. Uh, uh, make room for it. Uh, it's, it's continually uh, passing by. Uh, it's continual. It's not just Sunday mornings uh, at 11.15 when the choir's done uh, uh, that you should open up your home uh, and when when I talk about your home, I'm talking about the soul today. 
It's not just at 1115 uh, when I stand behind this desk uh, uh, that you should open up your home. Uh, uh, but I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, Monday night at 12 o'clock uh, when the Lord speaks to you. Uh, uh, Thursday in the middle of the day uh, when the Lord speaks to you. Uh, I hope and pray he finds uh, an open chamber uh, when he passes by uh, that you'll stop and make reverence of him and you'll listen to him and let him come in and abide with you for a little while let him come in and abide for a little while I feel like today I'm preaching to myself are y'all with me amen are you with me today I tell you God's worked all week on me with this message that we've got a lot of places for him to abide but he's coming to them and there's locked doors there's drawn curtains there's barred up windows and uh, well it's not time God to come in uh, uh, we're open from this time to this time uh, uh, right now is not hours of business uh, I want you to know something today even Jesus himself when he was going to the cross uh, was about the father's business uh, uh, when he was sitting there at 12 years old uh, in the tabernacle teaching the men uh, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes uh, he was about the father's business uh, uh, when he was born uh, uh, there in that man and he opened up his eyes uh, and he looked up at Mary and Joseph. Uh, he's seen an earthly mother and an earthly father. Uh, but I want you to know this today. Uh, uh, with all I could muster and all I could give today, uh, I want you to know this. Uh, he was about the Father's business uh, from the very first uh, uh, time he kicked in the womb uh, to the very first time he became that of an embryo. Uh, I know that gets a little bit crazy, uh, uh, but from the time the angel spoke to her and told her she would bear a son, he was about the Father's business. Uh, and the Bible teaches us to be Christ-like. Uh, in order to be Christ-like, we've got to be about the Father's business today. And the Bible goes on and it says this. Uh, uh, it talks about her ministry. She had a hospitality and a faith. They were four people uh, other than her involved in this. Uh, uh, you had that of Elijah and you had that of his servant Gehazi. Uh, and you have the, uh, that of her husband. Uh, uh, his name is never mentioned. Uh, then you got that of her son uh, that is yet to come. And they're all involved. Uh, uh, but I want you to know that this scripture, uh, it, it don't talk about them a whole lot. Uh, it talks about her faith, uh, her unmeasured faith. I want you to know something. Uh, uh, today I wished I could have half uh, the faith that this woman had. Uh, Elijah and his servant there, they go on and they travel away. Uh, uh, but before they travel, uh, they begin to talk to her. They begin to ask her. Uh, I'll read just a little bit more now. And it said there uh, in the 12th verse, uh, or back up to the 11th verse, and it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and, and lay there. Uh, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, uh, call this Shumanite. Uh, and when he had called her, she stood before him. Uh, and he stood, and he said unto her, uh, unto him, uh, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us uh, uh, with all this care, uh, hospitality, if you'll have it. Uh, what is it to be done for thee? Uh, what blessing can I give you? Uh, you've showed us great care. You've showed us great love. Uh, uh, what can I give you today? Uh, I want you to know something today. If you'll give God uh, a great love and great care, uh, if you'll accept his son Jesus and you'll take him in uh, and you'll let him abide in that chamber, what chamber are we talking about today? I'm talking about the heart. Uh, I'm talking about the soul where he can go in, uh, a place that is untouched by man. Uh, uh, we talk about heart transplants and we uh, talk about kidney transplants and those things. Uh, um, brother, and I want you to know today there's no soul transplant. Uh, there's not a doctor on this side, Brother Tim, uh, uh, that can reach the soul and take it out. Uh, it's something God placed in there uh, and he's going to retain it one day. Uh, when this life is called to an end, uh, he's going to call those souls back. Those that's accepted him and been saved, uh, he's going to call them back. But he says, you've shown us great hospitality. You've let us in. Now what can be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or, or to the captain of hosts? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. She said, I'm happy where I'm at. I don't want to be 
no great reverence person. I don't want to be held up above anybody else. I don't need my name on some sign or some cornerstone. She said, I've just done what God asked me to do, uh, what I perceived. Uh, she had a great hospitality and a faith. Uh, and he said, "When what then is to be done uh, for her? And Gehazi answered, uh, now I want you to know something. This is a very important part. She never asked for a son. She never uh, let on that she wanted children. And all the times that, that Elijah came by and Gehazi came by, uh, they noticed what was missing in her life. They noticed how well she took care of them. They noticed how well that she uh, prepared the room each time they left and she cleaned and she tidied it up. And when they come back the next time, it was ready again. But they also noticed that there was no child running around. They also noticed that there was a desire for her to be a mother. She had a motherly instinct. Uh, I want you to know something today. Uh, some of the best gifts from God are those you don't ask for. Uh, it's those that He just gives you. Uh, that He sees your life and He sees you're in need and He sees that it's missing and He places it there. Uh, how many of you today have those uh, uh, things in your life? But He said, Verily she hath no child and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he called, uh, had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, uh, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. Uh, she made herself a servant right there. She said, I'm a servant to thee. I'm doing what God's called me. Don't lie to me. I've not seen, uh, or nor have I ever fathomed, having that of a child. Don't lie to me. I know that my husband's old. I know that I'm older in age, but I, I don't have a child. I'm not expecting a child, so don't lie to me. And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to the father, to the reapers. And I want you to think about this for just a minute. She showed great godliness and, and, and respect for the word by opening her home. She showed that of leadership uh, and, and telling her husband that this is a man of God and telling the people in the community that this was a man of God. She showed all these things, but what was the most important she showed was that of the quality of a mother. Uh, mother Church, I want you to listen to this today. That's one of the best qualities we can show today, that we can take care of of what God puts in front of us. We can take care of what God sent our way. We can take care of the task at hand. She had a task of building the chamber. You may have a task of something greater, uh, but the best thing we can do is to show God we can take care of it. That way when that reward comes, we'll know that it's from Him. But she goes on and there and she promoted God's work. She didn't realize it that she was doing it at the time, but she promoted the work of God even to this day through this message and however many times other people preach this message this humanite woman years uh, centuries after she has passed is still promoting the work of God she's still promoting uh, the power of God the confidence uh, and the hospitality and the love and the faithfulness and all those things she's still today promoting it just by saying I perceive I perceive that God wants us to do this. I perceive that this is a man of God and we need to do it. Do we realize what an important role we play in God's word, in spreading of God's word, that years from now, somebody's going to stand in this altar, as many of you have. Somebody's going to stand in this church and say, I'm glad that little church loved me when nobody else would. I'm glad that little church made a place for me when nobody else would. I'm glad I was able to feel at home and do God's work in peace and in harmony when nobody else would. This woman was a great woman. She had a ministry in her own. And she got there and she now had a son. And the Bible says there that he went to his father at the reaper in the 19th verse. And we're going to try to read a little quicker here and finish up. But it says there, And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. 
Now there's a lot of significance in that scripture there. She went up. She didn't carry him to his room. She didn't carry him to the living room. She didn't carry him to some secret place. She carried him to where she had seen the man of God lay. Why is that important? Because it had been a while since the man of God had been by. Listen to me real close here today. You say, well, I ain't felt God's spirit in a while. Well, she still had the chamber. She still had the chamber and it was still open. There was still a bed there. There was still a desk there. There was still a candlestick there waiting for the next time that the man of God passed by. We've always got to have an open door for God. We've always got to be prepared. We can't take him in season and then close him out the next season. She kept that place. She kept that chamber. And this day it was needed. She took her son up and she laid him on the man of God's bed. And she watched and she uh, knew her son wasn't breathing. She knew her son was not alive. And she began to go out. And the Bible says there, and she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. She had to, still had this faith. She said, I'm going to go to the man of God and I'll be right back. And again, I'm going to try to use some words uh, a little here that you can understand it better. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. She said, I know that my spirit is going to lead me, and I know I'll find him. See, that point's missed so many times. She didn't know where he was. She didn't have Life 360. She didn't have no reservation. She didn't have no GPS. She had her faith and her uh, uh, well-being of herself, and she knew that God would lead her, and her spirit would lead her. Why is that? Because I want to tell you something today. If you've been born again and you've been saved, you know this without a shadow of a doubt. When it comes time to get close to the Lord, I know the way. I know the way. It's just as simple as getting humble enough to buckle the knees. It's just as simple as getting humble enough to get down on our knees and bow our head and ask Him. It's just as simple as you say, well, I, I don't get down on my knees when I pray. It's just as simple as stealing away in yourself and calling on the name of Jesus. But she said there, she said, it shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to his servant, drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. No matter how rough be the way, no matter how uh, uh, it, it gets uh, uh, tattered and how uh, I may be sore after this, no matter if we go through the thickets, no matter if we go through the mud, you slack not the ride and you go and you let the Spirit lead and we're going to find the man of God. And she got there, she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off that he said unto Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shumanite woman. He seen her from afar off in a crowd. Why did he see her uh, from afar off? Because they had relation. I want you to know something today. It don't matter how far. The Bible says there from afar off. It don't matter how far you've got from God. He still sees you. He still knows who you are. And when you come to him, he still sees you. He knows who you are. He's expecting you. So many times I have people tell me, a uh, uh, preacher, whether you go or not, they're expecting you. Now somebody's expecting you. And so uh, he, told, he said, there yonder is that Shumanite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? He said, Go find out if her family's okay. Go and ask her, Is she okay? She was his primary concern. He said, Is she okay? Is her husband okay? And is her son okay? And she answered and said, It is well. Now we all know today that that's a lie. If, if, if ever has been one told, it wasn't well with her. Her son was dead, and he was back home laying on the bed of the man of God. But she knew deep inside, you know, she was putting on this, it's well. Why? Because she knew deep inside that it was going to be okay, that it was going to be fine. She knew that God had a plan. Why did she know that? Because of her faith. And you back up into that of the 16th verse, and this is what she said. Do not lie unto thy handmaid. 
She said, don't give me something that you can't keep. Don't tell me something. So she knew that the man of God had given this to her and he was not going to take it away from her. I want you to know today that she was very persistent. She said, it is well. And when she came to the man of God on the hill, she, she caught him uh, by the feet. And Gehazar came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. I want you to think about this, what vexed means. Of problem or issue. Difficult and much debated. Problematic. If I had to ask you today how many of you had a vexed soul, we would probably all, all probably have to answer yes. We've all got difficult things we're dealing with right now. We've all got things that are much debated in our lives right now, should I or shouldn't I? And I'll leave it at that. And we've all got things in our life that are problematic. Amen. Amen. We've all got them. But this is the difference between us and her. She got to the feet of the man of God. And she got a hold of him. And she said, I need help. And he's seen by the countenance on her face. I want you to know something today. And this might surprise you. God already knows by the countenance on your heart what you stand in need of today. God already knows what is needed. But he said her soul is vexed. And God had hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? She started questioning the man of God. She said, Did I ask for it? Did I ask? You may be sitting there today saying, God, I didn't ask you for this. And he said, No, but I'm blessing you. No, but it's a blessing. God, I didn't ask. You think I asked to be where I am today? And do you think I asked to be able to surrender all things and to have to shed the world uh, for a little bit of a while every week and preach the gospel? Do you think that's something I just asked for? No, but it's a blessing today. It's what God has called. You are what God has called today. Just as he called this woman to be a mother, he called her to raise this child. He's called you to carry the situation you're in. Say, God, I didn't ask for this. No, but I blessed you with it. What does that song say? God will make this trial a blessing. I want to tell you something today, and you, you may think I'm crazy and I'm wrong. There's not a trial I've been through in my life that's not been a blessing in the end. There's something great come out of every one of them. But she went on there and she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? She, she got real harsh with the man of God. She said, did I not say, do not deceive me? Did I not say that I didn't want this God? Did I not say that if I do this, you'd always be with me? You'd always be right beside me, never leave me, nor forsake me. You'd always stand close by. But I want you to know something today. God's never left you. We've left him. He's never left you. He's never deserted you. He's never went away. But what happens is we done what the husband done. The husband went on back to planting the field. The husband went on back to the reapers. Uh, the husband went on back to taking care of putting food on the table. Uh, but that wife, listen real close, she kept preparing the chamber, expecting the man of God to come every day until she needed the chamber again. That's the way we should be, preparing the chamber every day. What is the chamber? Our soul. We should be preparing it every day for the passing by of the Lord to come in and abide with us. I got Jesus in my heart. There's not a thing in this world I need. I've got Jesus in my heart. There's nothing can ever take that away. And you're exactly right. But what happens is we get things in front of that and we cloud it up. And pretty soon, it's like the treadmill in the bedroom. It's got clothes hanging all over it. It's like that gym membership. It gets pushed to the back of your wallet, hardly ever looked at. It's like that, oh, I've got to have it. 
purchase you made that you realize a few months later that you could have done without it. All those things get in front of that chamber. And pretty soon that chamber just becomes a storage room. I don't need this, so I'll put it in there. I don't want to see this no more, and I'll put it in there, and I don't want that no more. She didn't ask for the child. She said, do not deceive me. Then it goes on in the 29th. Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child. The man of God reaches down to his servant and he says, all right, I'm busy. I'm covered up. I've got a busy schedule this week. You take my staff. You take it and you go ahead and you gird your loins and you stop not, you slack not your riding and you salute no one and you get there and you lay my staff on the face of that child. I want you to listen to what the mother said here. This is what the mother said and I, I'm going to give you this in my terms. She says, that man, guys, I didn't promise me a son, you did. I, I told you not to deceive me. I told you not to uh, lie to me. And I'm not leaving here today unless you're going with me. I want to tell you something today. She said, I'm not riding her back and facing the death of my child without the Lord God. And you're the man that I perceive to be connected to him. So go with me. In other words, don't go anywhere and deal with the things that's bringing you down without Jesus today. Get a hold of his feet and hang on. You say, well, that's what we got a preacher for. I want to tell you something today. Uh, this preacher can't save you. This preacher can't restore your faith. Uh, but if we'll find more people, and this is going to be uh, degrading to me today, if we'll find more people uh, to wrap their arms around Jesus than around the feet of the pastor, we'll see a world that'll change today. I can't do it, but he can. He said, go, serve it. And the servant rode on. She wrapped her arms around his feet and she said, I'm not going nowhere without you. <laughs> he didn't have no choice. He wasn't going to get nothing else done that day. She was all up in his grill. She was giving it to him serious. She said, I didn't ask you to lie to me. Come on, let's go. You've got a ride to make. The servant went on. You'll find in the rest of the reading, uh, Tina, Anthony, y'all get a song. The servant went on and he rode and he got there and he went into the chamber he done as the man of God told him and he, nothing. So he comes back and he rides back towards the man of God and the Shumanite woman. He rides back and he meets them and he says nothing. So they go on and they get there. The 32nd said, And when Elijah was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. Oh, what that must have done to Elijah. To come in and see the reverence. Listen to what God said. Don't just throw things in the chamber. Get them on the altar. That bed was the last thing Elijah done in that chamber. If you'll go back and you'll read. It says he got in that bed and he laid down and he rested. Let me tell you the most rest I've ever found in my life. Was at the altar begging God to take all my sins away. He got there and he seen that little child laying in his bed where rest had come to him so easy. And that child was dead. And he went there for and he shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. Just him and the child. He shut the door up and he got in there. What does that mean? I work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. I want you to know something today. It's between you and God today. Don't bring anybody else into it. Don't ask for no other opinion. If you're problematic, if you've got things that are devastating in your life and difficult, if your soul is vexed, close the door on you and God and get it figured out. He closed the door up and he said, this is my problem now. And that lady, that mother, listened to what she'd done. She stood back. She didn't try to burst in and say, that's my child in there. What are you doing with my child? She had complete faith. Her ministry was hospitality and faith. And this was the faith part of it. She stood back and let the man of God do what he needed to do. And he went in and the Bible says... 
He lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Let me tell you something. Have you ever been sitting somewhere and just get that warm, cozy feeling, whether it be church or whether it be riding down the road and that song, Tasha Cobb, Break Every Chain, comes on, gets me every time. Y'all might not know what I'm talking about, but there, there are certain songs that come, bring it all to the table is one of mine. Another one, I mean, hey, if you've got one, it's okay. I got two or three. But get that warm feeling. That's when God gets over you and you're finding out that you're one with him. That's what was important. Elijah got on him and he stretched out and his hands became the hands of the child. His eyes became the eyes of the child. His mouth became, his breath became the breath of the child. If we can get in one with God, we can get warm and we can have life today in this cold and dark world that we're living in. Why do I feel like I'm by myself today? Why? God's moving church, do you know that? He's trying to slide up under some of you and you're nudging your neighbor saying, get off me. It's not your neighbor, it's God trying to get you up. It's God trying to move you. He says, hold on a minute, I gotta get behind you. I'm trying my best to work in your life and you're shoving me away. But he got in there, he came out. The Bible says he would returned and he walked to and fro in the house and went up stretched himself upon the child and sneezed seven times and we all know seven means completeness fulfillment we know that seven is the, the, the number of all numbers and he got up on that child and he sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he was alive but I want you to listen real close. He called Gehazi and said, Call the Shumanite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Now me and you, we probably would have grabbed a hold of our child that was just dead. I don't know how many days passed between her writing. I don't know how many hours. It might have just been a day. I don't know, but it was a lot of time passed in between there. We would have grabbed a hold of our son and we would have loved. But listen to what she done and I'm going to close with this. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground. She gave thanks to the man of God before she grabbed up her blessing. Don't just always be looking for a blessing and grab it by the neck. <laughs> be sure you give thanks unto God. Be sure you give thanks unto him for what he's put in your path and what he's put in your life. Then it says, and took up her son and she went out. She put, picked up her son and she went out. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. The Bible says that was a grown child. But this mother, she picked him up and she went out. Some of the things in life that you're struggling over, they're big. They're going to be cumbersome but God will give you enough strength to carry them. God will give you enough strength to carry them. I know we've rambled a lot today, but I've tried my very best to stay on point and not share stories after stories. And I know y'all get tired of hearing my testimony and my stories and the things that happen with my children throughout life. But God uses those for me to preach to you. But today it was simply about a hospitality and a faith for the gospel. A hospitality and a faith for the gospel. Make a chamber for the man of God to lay in. Make a place to where the man of God feels comfortable and can come in and he can work and he can rest and he can get up and he can study and he can rest again. He can study again. But be sure, be sure of this. Don't let no servant come between you and God. Don't load it all on the servant. Don't go to the servant and say, 
Come carry the staff. Come carry the bed. Come carry the load. Come lead the wagon. You've got to get to God today. I believe with all that's in me that is today. There's somebody that needs to get to the feet of God and wrap your arms around and say, I need you today. You say, preacher, why are you so tore up today? This, this ain't like you've been preaching lately. I'll tell you why I'm tore up today. I'm broken. I'm broken for you today. We come in and we come out. We come in and we come out. And there's an altar here. And we seldom use it. I'm broken for the world today. That we say these things. There's great men that can handle my problems. I'm going to go sit down and I'm going to go talk to the Charles Stanley or I'm going to go talk to Jensen Franklin or I'm going to go talk to uh, Brother Graham or whoever it may be. I want to give you the most simple message I can ever preach. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. There's going to be things when you come talk to me you're still not going to tell me. You're still going to have a little bit of pride and say, I don't want my preacher to know this dark secret about me. He may think less. I promise you I never will. But I know through being a human myself, there's going to be things you still don't tell me. This woman come and she wrapped her arms around the feet of the man of God of Elijah there. I'm not going nowhere until you answer me. And he had an answer. I promise you this, talk to Jesus and he has an answer. You don't have to tell him anything. He can look at you and see what is wrong. He can read your countenance. He knows your mind. So go to him. I love you today, church. I do. I love you with all that's in me that is. You're my reason for existence on most days. I tell you, I could lose my mind so many times with the things of this world, but then I'm grounded in the fact that I've got a purpose and I've got a job to do. But I ask you today, hospitality and faith for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make him a place and have faith that he'll always be there. Make him a place and have faith he'll always be there. Stand to your feet. What's your number, Anthony? slides prepared and I couldn't get them to work and it'd been so easy to go some other way. It'd be so easy for you this morning to not take heed to what he's telling you. Just as he give that Shumanite woman, that child, he's give you something to do. And it's yours to take care of. It's yours to raise. It's yours to, to take care of and to feed and to grow. And right now, listen to me real close, right now it's laying there lifeless because it's not been spoken. It's laying there lifeless. And God's telling you, I'm here with it. There's life in it, but you've got to speak it. You've got to believe it. Sing another verse if you would, please. I'm just saying the gospel. Just sing it.
Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. I hope and pray the reason you're so quiet is because this message is burning inside of you. You're sitting there trying to process it. <clears throat> Wednesday night, let's all try to be here for Miss Tina for choir practice. I'll throw this out. I know we've got an awesome technology team and all those things, but Heather and Katie can't always be here. So anybody that has any knowledge in that field and would like to talk with them, uh, Kip could always use a little bit of help. Amen. It's a lot of work to throw on just a group, small group of people. And, and I want to tell you, if we want to keep live broadcasting and things growing and, and doing, need a little help in that area. So if some of you feel the Lord's speaking to you today and don't know what it is, there's your job. So anybody that wants to talk with them, they're busy, can't always be here. No, we love you, we appreciate you. Anybody got anything? Seth so Tyler, you lead us in a word of prayer. Count of Grace Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for this beautiful sun this morning hitting the, hitting the mountains and the snow, Lord, just the beauty of the landscape that you paint us. Lord, even in last night in the darkest hour, Lord, it's snowing and, and just this morning we wake up to just a beautiful landscape. Lord, we just thank you for all that you give us, the breath of life that you breathe into us, Lord. Just thank you for this message that we brought to, to us this morning, Lord. Just lead God and direct us as we go through our, our coming weeks, Lord, and just thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In the name of